Park. And good afternoon or good morning, wherever you happen to be. <laughs> it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Tom and Shane, another video to help a small business get a little closer to that black bottom line. <laughs> We're happy to be here with you, Tom Eagle Huff and Shane McDobbin. Uh, today's topic, uh, we're going to talk about how to create word of mouth advertising for your small uh, business. And uh, that's a pretty good topic, wouldn't you say, Shane? Oh, it's a huge topic because it's something that uh, helps you engage with uh, <clears throat> you know, the, the locals, particularly in a small mm -hmm. town and a uh, brick and mortar operation. But even, uh, you know, on the... Uh, the net when when you're dealing with global sales and the potential for social networking mm -hmm. you know word of mouth is basically social you know networking yeah and uh, so you know whether you type it to to uh, pa you know pass on your word of mouth comments or you share them with people in your town terrific thing Be mm -hmm. get getting to know you it's a great that song that's for sure. Well, uh, you know, we've uh, we've all uh, suggested a movie to somebody at one time or another or a book or or uh, maybe uh, the uh, two radio guys on Saturday from 8 to 11 on KMMSAM.com. I mean, why would you not want to listen to those guys? Uh, <laughs> they're so uh, fabulous that, uh, I mean, come on. And award winning, and award winning as well. So yeah, you got to get those two guys uh, on your listener list. So, but uh, but yeah, um, and and of course you, if people don't know Shane, you were in the restaurant business for many many years, and I can't think of another business other than maybe the movies where word of mouth is more critical to the success of a restaurant. Because if you don't have good food, if you don't have good uh, ambiance, if you don't have good wa uh, waiters, waitresses, um, you know, uh, there's so many things that go into that, that people will either leave the restaurant shouting your praises or they will <laughs> tell you that it sucks. <laughs> you don't even want to go anywhere near. Don't even go to the same block that restaurant's on. That's right. I mean, in a full service restaurant, uh, you, you're going to have maybe anywhere from three to six people that will contact you within the restaurant during your visit and your meal. And that's why it's called full service. <clears throat> you know, you go into McDonald's, you'll meet the person that checks you in and the person that hands the bag to you to check you out. So you, yeah, the, that's, uh, it. that's the least service <laughs> you can possibly get. And they're trying to cut that down with robots. But Having said all that, yeah, it's a it's a major reality that human beings like to gossip, like to talk, and have like to have something to talk about, and uh, so a shared experience that they've had with other people in a setting of business is always something for them to tell people about. And the funny thing is, is that it doesn't need it's it's especially positive because they'll say, Oh, I went to such and such store the other day and I picked out the nicest thing for my granddaughter or, you know, my daughter or myself. So yeah, it, it, people talking is always important. And historically two things were important. Fifth Avenue back in the forties and fifties created this whole consensus in marketing and uh, it evolved into a tradition called the water cooler. We all know about, well, I don't know. <laughs> now it's yeah. post COVID by who knows, yeah. but you know, there was a saying, you know, on a Monday morning, everyone would meet at the water cooler or the coffee stand, you know, where you get your coffee mm -hmm. and you talk about the movie or what you did over the weekend with whoever was standing there. So it's, it's a great way for people to engage and share their life because people do want to share their life. Yes, they do. Well, um, a lot of people think uh, probably word of mouth, uh, there's no control over that. Uh, it either happens or it doesn't. But uh, what we want to talk about today is how to create some positive word of mouth. Um, and uh, in starting uh, doing that, um, one thing that will create positive word of mouth is setting some word of mouth goals. What do you want to have happen within your, uh, you know, within your business that will uh, generate um conversation outside your four walls and there's there's several ways to uh, to do that of course in the restaurant business is over and above service uh, obviously good food and all of that and uh, but in a, 
other uh, type stores, mainly it's the shopping experience. And that's something that a lot of people kind of, they deal with the what's happening inside their four walls from a monetary standpoint and maybe a profit standpoint. And they don't really, um, they don't really focus on the human aspect, Shane. That's correct. And, you know, when, when Tom mentions, you know, creating certain goals, you've already done that in your business plan and your uh, revenue plan. So there's nothing wrong with you sharing those two documents, your revenue plan and your anticipated mm -hmm. revenues in the future for the next five years. That's a positive thing for employees to see, as is in your advertising or marketing program, because mm -hmm. that should be a part of it. You know, certain goals or you know, setting certain goals should be an actual section in, in your, in your marketing program. Um, very important because of so many accesses to advertising that you can use, but you know, sometimes you can't afford it. It's, it, you know, it's not, you know, mm -hmm. anything is a, an additional expense that reduces your paycheck at the end of the month. So, yeah. you know, that it, it there, it's a bit personal. And mm -hmm. this is one that there's literally no cost to. Yeah. Well, the next thing we want to talk about is um, marketing goals and objectives uh, must be a uh, specific. In other words, if we're going to, if we're going to control word of mouth, uh, we need to be, we need to have a goal of what we want our worth, uh, our word of mouth to accomplish. And how are we going to do that? Um, you know, if uh, one example that we have is um, returns, if you're getting a lot of returns in your business, then, okay, uh, we're going to uh, maybe spend more time with the employees about explaining to the customer the return policy or whatever, and making sure the customer, um, the, the purchase they've made is, uh, it's, it's that they really want that product that they don't want to return it or, or whatever. And, um, over time we can improve, we can reduce the number of returns, which in, um, uh, in the other hand, will, uh, increase our customer satisfaction, which is what we want to do. So the, there are some ways to do this effectively. That's right. And marketing goals and objectives can um, be, you know, clearly outlined again in your, in your marketing plan. Um, you know, I, I think that it's really Im incumbent on people, um, e even if the, it's a virtual business or more brick and mortar, to get involved in local things. You, there's, mm. I mean, every small town has at least one school. So there's all kinds of school uh, things that you can get involved in, sports and different activities, the chess club, and and be able to create the uh, a window for you to meet parents and and um, other people, uh, you know, teachers and so forth that are potential clients. And, you know, it's um, one of the great ones that I had for my business uh, when I went into the financial industry and my girls were in uh, junior high was uh, to set up a, a, ja a Japanese ex a student exchange program uh, with the parent teachers. And then we got the school board to approve it. And it became a huge success. And uh, we, what we would do is, you know, exchange our daughters uh, with a family in Japan for two weeks. And uh, so it was a great experience for the children to go. But we, as a result, we had, you know, a big luncheon and uh, when they, you know, to talk about it when they left. So you got to hand out cards to everyone and meet all the kids. And then uh, when they came back, we had a big dinner to welcome them back and so, it, it, you know, these types of things you can put into place in your marketing goals and objectives that once again, um, you know, a potluck is not a big expense and you can get a lot of people to a potluck at school. <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> That's for sure. Well, Donna's with us. Donna says, hi, Tom. Hey, Donna. Thanks for joining us. We appreciate you uh, very much uh, chiming in here with us. Uh, always a pleasure. And, uh, well, um, the... Uh, the biggest thing, uh, I guess, Shane, um, the number one word of mouth problem is customer complaints. Uh, there, you need to, uh, you need to make it easy for the customer to complain. We've, we've always uh, preached this, that if, um, you know, there should be some kind of a, maybe, um, 
uh, you know, some restaurants used to use a, they'd pass that little form, you know, how was your meal? How was your service? Whatever, you know, give them, give them an easy way to complain because if they leave that store, your place of business unhappy, they're going to tell probably 10 people where they might've told three you had a good experience, but they'll tell 10 you had a bad experience. Yeah, that's always consistent with with people, especially in the the first world economies, which are capitalist. And in the context of capitalism, you know, people have a right to choose and they have uh, the basic choice of what they need or they want. So, it, you know, if someone comes in and buys something they want, that's boy, that's really important. If they already know what they want, it's very it's a lot easier to sell. It's a lot easier to deal with them. But if they come in and buy something, you know, that they just want, you know, that's a that's a totally different experience for them. So in both experiences, you you, you want to have a, a positive input and make them feel welcomed and comfortable uh, where, you know, one you just go to one part of the store and they look at the different products that you offer. It's always important to know the stores in your neighborhood, too, and have maybe um, you know, products that, uh, at the front that, you know, you might notice are selling, you know, as other, at, at, at other stores, you know, the big box stores have had huge success in the last 30 years about having people line up and having all kinds of products, uh, either at a discount or just sitting there that are new products as people are waiting in line. So it, it's a, this is a great w a way to create a positive attitude for customers is having other products that, wouldn't necessarily go or naturally go with your store, but you know, if you're able to pick something out from a distributor at a, at a very inexpensive price and then offer it mm -hmm. at what seems to be a very good price to the customer, that's a good thing. Cause uh, you know, I H and M, I go back to H and M cause I want to see what they have waiting in line there. Those are the best deals at H and M for me. <laughs> okay. All right. Next, we've got to talk about word of, mo word of mouth and employees. This is a double-edged sword because this can, this can operate inside your four walls plus outside your four walls. So inside your four walls, um, one of my pet peeves has always been that owners and managers, if they're not on the premises physically, they need to empower somebody to act in their stead. Because you can't have a customer coming in with a complaint and there's no one there to handle that complaint. That's just going to escalate the, uh, the unhappiness of, of the customer. So there has to be a way to, uh, to uh, make sure that this customer is taken care of if the owner, manager, or whoever supervisor is not on the premises. The other problem is that you need to create a work environment so that when the employee leaves the workplace, that they're not sitting on a bar stool somewhere talking about how horrible it is where they work, <laughs> what a lousy manager you are, mm -hmm. and how bad the products are, how overpriced they are, whatever. Uh, so uh, we need to create an environment where people were going to work is, you know, if you have to work, you might as well be happy working where you are. So create an environment where the employee can be happy while they're there. They're appreciated and uh, they'll go out and tell more people that, uh, Hey, it's a great place. You know, I'm happy to be there. It's a good job. Yeah. And yes. And Tom is to find this exceedingly well, because if you have a virtual business, you are it. You're the salesman, you're the manager. The yeah. operator. <laughs> so you, it, this doesn't necessarily apply to you, but this is so important. What Tom has said and that's why if you have an establishment, a brick and mortar establishment with less than five employees, you don't really need a manager. You just need supervisors. So literally you can make all employees supervisors. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, if they have an issue with a, with a customer and they say, well, is there someone in here that can deal with it? Oh, yes, I'm I'm not just an employee. I'm a supervisory employee. So that, that makes the customer feel comfortable and they're de dealing with someone of authority. And someone who can decide. And Tom is absolutely right that, you know, they have to have the ability to make a snap decision about how to make the best situation uh, for the uh, customer to, to come about as they can. Uh, because a happy customer is always a customer. We know that. 
Mm -hmm. History has taught us that. And both Tom and I have the experience to tell you that's the way it works. That's for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, uh, most customers, I mean, they don't want you to pay off their mortgage, <laughs> you know, as a <laughs> to make them happy. Uh, generally, they only want a couple of things. One is a full refund, which uh, an employee should be empowered to give a refund if if that's what the customer wants. Uh, or they want a replacement of the product, um, you know, or some uh, some way that they're made whole again. Uh, and if it was your error, then absolutely you do it. Uh, even if it was their error, um, you know, it depends on the circumstance, but you, you try to accommodate as best you can. Well, that's so, right. And especially a customer, because we ha you have to realize, and, you know, you want to tell your employees when you're training them, for someone to do this, come back with a product or to return it or to complain, mm -hmm. they have to make a conscious decision to organize their time, get it, get the product and everything back together or packaged however they want, get in their car, drive or walk or take the bus to your establishment, park if they drove, um, you know, get off at the bus stop and so forth. So they've taken time. You know, they've already mm -hmm. spent, you know, any it could be anywhere from half an hour to an hour. Um, thinking about getting this done. So, you know, a lot of people are very conscious of time management or their time. So, you know, you got to be careful right off the bat because yeah, you do. They, they're already going, mm -hmm. you know, I, you know, wow, I've had to do an hour to get this done. Right. So yeah, the minute they come in the store with let's solve this problem, they're going, Oh, wow. I was smart to do this. And this is the right store to come back to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's the, that's the important thing and training your employees to, sort of hold their hold their emotions in check mm -hmm. um, because you, you don't want the customer shouting at the employee and you don't want the employee shouting back at the customer. <laughs> so, That's right. Uh, you know, you don't want, you want to de-escalate and not <laughs> escalate the uh, situation between the, between the two uh, people. It's uh, uh it's much easier to train your employees to listen to the person, uh, listen fully, restate what they said so that they know you understand their issue and then solve it. It's pretty, pretty simple. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You don't want to make it dramatic. You want to make it successful. And um, a yeah. successful issue like this is, is easily solved. If you don't have the product to replace it, you know, replace it with something else. Mm -hmm. If you have to send it away, then tell them that you'll send it away. But here, here's the product to, to replace it. And if it comes back repaired, you can always put it in, been repaired, works well. We're selling it for 10 bucks. You know, yeah. like there's, mm -hmm. there's a lot of solutions to any problem. I always look for the easiest solution and the one that will bring a customer back to you again. Yep. Yeah, that's the uh, final word, obviously, is we want to retain customers, but we also want to do our part within our stores and within our places of business to make sure that uh, when people leave, they're leaving positively. Uh, they're leaving with a positive attitude. Uh, same with the employees. We want the employees to say, well, you know, boy, that was a, that was really a good day I had today. You know, mm -hmm. I got these sales and we uh, took care of this customer and we took care of this complaint and they can go home happy and, uh, you know, not beat the wife or <laughs> kick the dog. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> or, yeah. You know, or, or, or uh, that, go in, that, go into that road rage. Hand response. Is that what you're talking about? The secondhand response? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No road rage on the yeah. uh, drive home, <laughs> you know, all of that. So, uh, so yeah, it's, uh, it's really, uh, critical that, um, you can control word of mouth to a certain extent. So, uh, keep that in mind that what happens within your four walls, within the employees and the, and the, uh, the interaction with the uh, customers and the employees, absolutely critical uh, to uh, positive vibes going outside your four walls. 100%. Couldn't yeah. agree with you more there, Thomas. All right, man. All right. Hey, don't forget, uh, word of mouth. Uh, we are on radio every Saturday, <laughs> 8 to 11, Mountain Time. Uh, no need to leave any email. There's nothing to join. You don't have to pay any money. Uh, you don't have to do anything except sit there and listen and call us or text us. Uh, we do both. 
And if you missed any of our podcasts or any of our videos, of course, they are all over at KMMSAM.com. Click on Tom and Shane's podcast over there and you can uh, catch up on uh, whatever we have uh, done in the past. So also don't forget, uh, we are using StreamYard to do this. So uh, if uh, you are uh, thinking about doing uh, YouTube videos or things like that, uh, we recommend StreamYard. It's down in the uh, it's down in the uh, description below. And also, uh, hey, if you like the information we provide, uh, subscribe, ring the notification bell, like us, leave a comment, and uh, or if you have a question about uh, word of mouth marketing or word of mouth creation, we would certainly uh, be likable to uh, answer that for you. And we're on Patreon also. Uh, if you'd like to support the show, uh, Tom and Shane will do great stuff for you personally, one-on-one. -on -one, if you become a uh, Patreon uh, member of our uh, podcast here, and uh, we hope that you will. So, all right, that's going to wrap it up for us. So um, we'll be back on Thursday, same time, same same place, <laughs> and we hope uh, you'll join us. So. We will see you then. Bye for now.